Hi everybody and welcome back to my weekly vlog. As you can see, this weekend I'm going slightly bigger. <laughs> yeah. So I thought about it and since um my friend kind of got her expanders filled up last week, I thought, hey, I have an idea, Jessica. Why don't you go with your semi-bigger boobs this coming weekend? Not your massive ones, not the Z-cups that you were keeping an eye on and treating like a baby bird so they don't break like the other three did, but go with the X-cups. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so, that's my uh, plan for the weekend. I'm going to be this big this weekend. Which... If this pans out, I'm definitely going to look into getting some bigger sports bras. Because uh, for those of you that don't know, I actually have to wear a sports bra with these now. Because I lost the rest of it. Um, as you can see, it kind of like ends here. So yeah, these are forms. But because my... Because the rest of it ripped on me, I don't have it anymore. So I'm kind of at a loss for some of it. Uh, I do have to kind of trim a little bit more on these. Uh, these are the first ones that ripped, so I had to trim off a bit of the bottom stuff to make it fit a little better, but it's not bad um, for what it is. It's not bad. But I want to talk about how my week went, and I do have a bit of a topic for this week, believe it or not. So, my week was not the greatest, but was really fun. Monday, Tuesday, blue chunks, massive chunks. They just, they suck so bad. I just kick them out of the, kick them off the bed. They're gone. <laughs> no, uh, basically I was dealing with the remnants from last weekend, uh, my birthday. I wasn't able to hang out with my friend because she got called into work, which sucked. Because I actually started feeling really lonely, I ended up really thinking back to um, the crap with my other friend and that was not a good thing. So I slipped big time, had to let my sponsor know because in this case, um, what happened four months ago or a little over four months ago, um, you already know, but, uh, a friend of mine is basically being like my sponsor for this sort of like an, a sponsor for AA. I have a friend that's doing the sponsor for me. So if I'm feeling really good, I let her know, I check in like, couple times a month check in say hey I'm doing really good you know I haven't really looked at her posts lately uh, I'm feeling really good wasn't thinking about her been keeping myself busy stuff like that and this past weekend oh boy oh boy oh boy RD did I slip massively uh last Friday I actually cried which I have not done in full disclosure I have not cried since April Last Friday was the first time I cried since. And that was not good. Uh, I slipped big time. And I was miserable about it. That was Friday night. Saturday was a little better. Not great, but a little better. I ended up uh, still being a little depressed. For obvious reasons. But... Um, more so because my friend and I were trying to get together for my birthday weekend, but she got called into work and that killed the plants. So instead of me getting to spend time with a friend of mine and actually enjoy myself, I ended up being alone ish. My mom and Twix were here, obviously, but I wasn't around other people, just the same two that I'm always around. And I couldn't really escape the mentality of everything that was going on. So that sucked um, tremendously. Then Sunday came around and I had to go back to work Monday morning, Monday afternoon. Sorry, Monday afternoon. So Sunday was the last day that I could be me for the week. And it went so fast. It, it was literally a blink and I missed it. And I was done. And I was like, no. Oh. Because I can't be me. I can't be like this when I'm at work. And the reason why is because I'm not um, fully out at work. And it does get annoying. 
But while the company has stated, oh, we're LGBTQIA friendly, or we are LGBTQ plus friendly, it's some of the managers at my store that aren't. And it's driving me to look for another job where I can be accepted for being transgender and transitioning. It's not easy, not in the least, but by God, I'm trying. Okay, enough of the pity party. So, I did have some fun stuff to happen this week. For starters, one, I had three, count them, three job interviews. Two of them were yesterday. One was for a community library, which if I get the job, I'll have to get a couple clearances, which won't be difficult. But I did bring up to them because I had sent an email and I can double check with the email. I can send them one tomorrow and double check with it. Um, but I, I guess I will if I actually get the job because I did send the references. Um, I did let the person know that I am transgender because I didn't, I don't know how to bring it up when I go for an interview. Because for the longest time when I did an interview, I had to be my male self. And it's just, go right through, no problem. When they ask you, is there any other questions you have for me? That's when I should ask, hey, I'm transgender. Um, Are you cool with that? I never think to ask because I am already uncomfortable at, it, at the interview as it is. I am nervous. I am massively self-conscious. I am thinking that I'm fucking this up. Regardless of how I try, I'm thinking I'm fucking this up. So for me to say, oh yeah, but hey, by the way, I'm transgender. Um, is that a problem? Yeah, I can see that being a deal breaker. Um, but I asked this in an email with the person because I had to fix up a time. We, I was supposed to meet them on Monday, but Monday didn't pan out so I had to be at work at 2. And they wanted to interview me at 2.30, so that didn't work. So I ended up uh, doing it Wednesday morning at 10.30. I got there a little early. You're supposed to get um, to an interview. It's proper etiquette. I remember uh, when I was in college, or in tech school, I should say, to get there 15 minutes early for an interview. That way, they know that you're eager, you're not running late, and if they are a little early, they can take you back a little early. I got there early, and it went really well. I won't deny that. It went extremely well. Um... I did have a lot of fun. Uh, we were cracking jokes. They understood. Hey, as I said, I work in a deli. Um, the director used to work in a deli. So she definitely understands. Okay, yeah. Not a problem. I can definitely bring up the transgender. I don't won't be able to wear my, my boobs. I, I guarantee you, if anything, maybe my small forms or my H cups, but not my S for these girls. At least not right away. I know that. Definitely, though, I can... At least wear my tops. I can. I'm not planning on wearing skirts to this place, but I can at least wear my tops. Um, I can wear my jeans. Granted, I do have better jeans, not the ones that I wear to go grocery shopping. To have a hole and a patch like right about where <laughs> this hole is on my pants leg. Yeah, I have my pair of jeans that have a little hole in it. But um, all that being said, I do have. Um, better jeans. So I can wear better jeans. It's not a problem. Um, but yeah. So that was, believe it or not, that was yesterday morning. Then I had a second interview, literally before I had to start, before I had to get to work yesterday afternoon. And I got the response back from them a little while ago. It came, well, it came in earlier today, but I had interview number three earlier today. And their answer was no. So, interview number three. This is where today gets really fun. So, today, uh, I had a morning shift. This is the first morning shift I have had in two weeks. Last one I had was two weeks ago. First off, I love morning shifts because I get to come home when it's still light out. I leave when it's light out and I come home when it's light out. I am not there until 9 o'clock at night having to clean up. I'm not having to babysit an ungrateful associate that I work with because he doesn't understand the concept of see if there's something in the well first before you go open up a new one. Which he's going to have to have drilled into his head because the one person had to throw away almost 200 bucks worth of food. And they're pissed. Not my fault. 
And I even told him exactly where to point the blame. Check with the three newbies, particularly this one and this one. I'm not one to point blame, but I'm not taking a $200 pay shot out of my ass for that. Hilton, though. But, um, so today, I went from work. My interview was at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I drove. I had um, enough time. I was thinking, okay, which way do I want to go to get there? I knew the one way was going to be a massive clusterfuck. It is a traffic jams nightmare. And I mean that. It is a place where a traffic jam will literally have a nightmare. I'm like, I'm not going that way. Mm -mm, that ain't happening. So I decided I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to cut through the one town and go that way. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, was that a mistake. That road was blocked. Massive pileup, massive traffic jam, just trying to get on Main Street. Fine. I'll turn this way, go up the top of the hill, basically be a hop, skip, and a jump from where I live, and just go the main way. Like I would go when I go in that way to, go my, to do my grocery shopping. Coming up the hill, I had a car that decided, I'm going to slam on my brakes. Because it's not paying attention what's in front of it. I, because it's raining, I'm a little cautious, still have to slam on my brakes. Which are starting to wear out, mind you. And, oh my glad they lasted and held. I'm not even joking on this. I'm so glad they held. And then, BAM! I got rear-ended. Happily, I'm okay. The driver of the other car is okay. And both vehicles are okay. So I'm extremely... Uh, I can't even begin to tell you how massively happy I was when I looked at this. The, the guy gets out of his car and starts walking around to the front of his car. We're, in the, we're literally on the roadway. And he's looking in front of his car. I'm driving up the street. And he's looking at me like, why aren't you stopping? Why aren't you getting out? We need to get this taken care of. I roll down my window. It's still raining. And yell, I'm trying to get off the street. Then I'll check on it. We're driving up an incline, you jackass. We're causing more of a traffic jam. Get the fuck off the road first. Then worry about it. <laughs> he was keeping up with me for a good, I want to say, um a couple meters that we were moving for, he finally said, I'm going to stop and get out and look at this. I'm like, I want to stop and get out and look at this too, but I want to get the fuck off the road and not in somebody's driveway. So we pulled into the garage. It's like right up the street from me and both cars were fine. I was, I, honest to God, I got out of the car. I am walking to the back of it and I'm thinking, okay, I know this hit me hard enough because it jolted everything in the seat. It jolted my head back against the headrest. I ended up flipping the high beams on with my hand, flipping off my um, wipers with the other hand. Didn't realize I did either of those. And I'm like, oh god, this is going to be bad. I'm, I am expecting the back end of the car to be completely crushed in. Everything's going to pot. I get to the back of the car. Nothing. The back of the car is completely unscathed. The front of his car is completely unscathed. There's some, like, there's a coating on the bumper of my mom's car, because that's what I was driving. That's a little scratched up yet. But to be fair, I got hit before. Same spot. And that's all that happened the first time. Now, granted, that one was a nice, gentle nudge. This one was a full-on... I heard the sound of, oh, shit, that was fiberglass hitting fiberglass. But I'm okay. And the car's okay. <laughs> car's okay, I'm okay, nothing was wrong with it because I was able to drive it then to my interview, so I got there. Got the interview taken care of, I doubt I'm getting that job, but I might, don't know. If I do, woohoo, if not. But I did meet the store manager, um, it's for a place that's just soon opening, so if I get it, um, I met the store manager, so which is kind of nice. Um, he actually has the same name that will soon be my dead name, so that's actually pretty cool. Um, trying to think of what else, but no, that's about it for today. That, that has literally been my day.
I tried to watch uh, Luna Moans, Jugs and Mugs, but I could not. I, I pity the poor guy from Boopedia that was their special guest because I couldn't under. I I could. I could barely listen to them. I'm starting to understand why uh, one of my favorite anime series is named Kashimashi and what Kashimashi actually means because, my God, I could not understand those three when they started talking. And it just took me back a little bit to when uh, my two friends and I hung out back in January when I finally learned a bit of makeup. And I'm just like, I don't think the three of us made that much noise. And these three are... Yeah, no, I couldn't. I, I had to shut it off. It's still going on right now. But I had to shut it off. I couldn't do it anymore. But anyway, that's 15 minutes worth of me um, squawking. My um, topic for this week, believe it or not, is just rolling with the punches. And in this case, I am a prime example of it. So let me explain what I mean. So when you look at me, You just see somebody with large boobs that are fake, um, trying to be something that she's not, obviously, <laughs> and thinking that I'm like an airheaded bimbo. And the more I try to change that aspect of myself and the more people try to think that I'm not, it doesn't work. I guarantee you 90% of my subscribers, no offense to everybody, but I guarantee you 90% of my subscribers subscribe for and nothing else, which is fine. If that's your thing, you'll see them because I put up gameplay videos. I am planning to do other videos, so you'll see them. It's part of who I am because that's what I want to do. But when life just wants to constantly beat your ass into the ground, like it is a prize fighter and you are this tiny little scrawny, you can barely hold your hands up in the gloves and it wants to kick your ass. That's when you just have to learn to roll the punches. And... I have been learning that a lot, um, especially the last four months, and I have to definitely keep going forward with that. Uh, and it, it does hurt. I won't lie. Because rolling with the punches can be for a lot of things. Just adapt to change. One of my favorite sayings is actually a very, very well done um, homily. or not even a homily. It's just a really, good, really well done uh, words of wisdom. Be like the rock in the river. It does not fight the water. It does not try to stop the water. It just lets the water flow. Because the rock in the river can't stop the water. The rock in the river can't prevent the water from coming. It just rolls with it. All the other rocks do. So be like the rock in the river. Life is the water and you're the rock. For me, when I fell for my friend, it... I won't lie, it made me feel wonderful. I felt a massive joy in my life that I have not felt in years. And when I had to try to stop that joy, it it hurts a lot. But I'm getting better with it. I'm learning to roll with the punches. When I got scammed out of $2,000 and my mom and I were practically broke off our ass. Like I was in the negative. We could not even afford food. I'm counting pennies on our living room floor just to try to cash them in at a coin star to get groceries for the week. Just so we would have something to eat. I learned to adapt and just rolled the punches. Even now. Okay, I don't make that much money. I live paycheck to paycheck. I have to make some type of change. It's cutting back on food. I may eat one time a day. Two if I'm lucky. I might not get um, three square meals. I might not get a decent meal. I might have, oh, here's a little bowl of cereal. Because I got these nice pouches from the Dollar Tree. Um, I might get, oh, here's like two slices of bread. On Fridays, I try to at least eat something good. Um, mostly because I know my body is craving something. It's one of the reasons I will usually buy lunch for my mom and I, because my body's craving something. Um, it'll either be, oh, I'll stop and get some sandwiches, or, oh, hey, Walmart has this on sale this week. I'll pick one of those up. Or I'll get um, McDonald's on my way home, because there's a, literally a McDonald's in the same parking lot. I mean, no, seriously. It goes uh, Dollar Tree's over here in the shopping center, like a strip mall. The Walmart's all the way over here. And right over here is a nice McDonald's. 
Don't go inside of it, though, anymore, but go through the drive-thru. drive is very nice. The inside, not so much. The drive through is very nice. But I will do stuff like that, and it, it does help. And that's the thing. It's not perfect, because then my mom and I make pizza uh, that night, really big pizza, but we split it in half and then have the other half for lunch the next day, or if I'm busy, lunch Sunday. So we make it work, and we're adapting to the change. I mean, I don't have a working shower. I seriously don't. I mean, like, here, hold on. I'll show you guys. I don't mind. Hold on. It's going to get dark for a little bit, though, but hold on. I don't mind showing everybody. So, like, this is my bathroom, and this is my shower. It's not very pretty, but you don't have one. Okay, there we go. Put my shoe back. I knocked my shoe over. And then, uh, my room. Probably saw my diploma on the wall for a little bit, but... Alright, but, yeah. I mean, we don't have a working shower. I mean, it works, but... We have so much junk in there we can't get rid of. Uh, most of it's just extra water bottles from a couple winters ago when we lost electricity in half the house. Like, I was living on the second floor yet. This room, the bathroom, my mom's room, and everything across that. No electricity. Uh, we were watching TV by hooking up, believe it or not, this I, I completely ghettoed this, and I will not deny that I ghettoed this. The other half of the house had power, so I took an extension cord, put it onto a surge protector, and that's what we were using to power the TV, so we could at least watch TV. It was the most ghetto thing in the world. I will never deny that. Uh, we could not make the, use the coffee maker at the same time, but we at least were able to watch TV. <laughs> but nowadays, uh, happily, we got that fixed. As you, well, duh, I'm living in here now. <laughs> I'm not up on the second floor anymore. I'm living down here. So obviously we got that fixed. But we still have the extra water bottles for if we lose power or if we have a really cold winter or, again, it's mostly for power outages so we can flush the toilet um, and at least... We have some in the kitchen, actually, for, like, boiling water on the stove to warm up. So we adapt. We learn to roll with the punches. We are prepared for whatever could possibly happen. Now, am I saying that bad things are going to happen? Well, yes and no. Bad things can happen regardless if we want them to or not. Whether it's something small and minute, like, oh, the power went out for a couple hours. Or it's something massive, like... You know, half the house is gone. It could be just something very minute that bothers you. Like, oh, hey, um, my girlfriend or boyfriend left me. Or, oh, I lost $20 somewhere. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's small amounts of things. But at the end of the day, it's not the sum of it. It's everything else. And I know I'm jiggling my tablet around like crazy, but I'm trying to get comfortable. It's... It's been a long day, and I'm ready to just crawl into my bed, crawl up with my blankets, put my MP3 player on, and just go to sleep. <sighs> I have been up since 6 this morning. I'm not used to getting up that early anymore, unless it's the weekend. If I had had to have been up at 2 this morning, then there'd be problems. Oh my god. I used to do that every day for a good two years. I got up at 2... And it were between 2 and 3 in the morning. And I would not go to bed till about 8, 9 o'clock at night. I'm not joking. I did that for 2 to 3 years. When I was still helping out the local fire company, I would get up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, go to the fire company, help them out with their stuff. I had permission to be there that early because that way I could do updates. I, cause I explained to them, hey, nobody else is using the computers. Nobody else is using the internet. And... I did the research and proved that this is when this stuff is, like, massively easier to update. And it was. So, I did the updates, and I would answer the phone, check messages, um, 
redo um, voicemails that needed to be done, greetings, send out emails so that everybody would have it first thing in the morning, and we could get answers to questions. So I had that down to a science, and I had to get up at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning to do it. And I was awake until 8, 9 o'clock at night. And there were days when I had to go to work at 5 a.m., and I was still up at 3 a.m. So I'm used to it. Nowadays, not so much, because I haven't had to do any of the fire company stuff since I left it in December. I don't have to do it anymore, which is fine by me. I miss it a little. I miss it a little bit, but I don't miss it. Miss it. I miss the peace and quiet, but I don't miss the... All right, let me phrase that. I miss the early morning I can do... I, I just feel like I have the entire world to myself at 2 o'clock in the morning. If you ever... If you ever want to have a very peaceful and mindful experience of yourself or just a peaceful moment with your life, do this. Get up at two o'clock in the morning. I'm actually going to say this, but put on Major Tom. I think it's a David Bowie song, if I'm not mistaken. It probably is. If not, it's a different group, but you know the song. It's Major Tom. Put that on at like two, three o'clock in the morning. Let the sounds of, if you live out in the country, let the sounds of the crickets. And the nothingness just soak in. I promise you that you will definitely feel just this zen moment. Because I, I sure as hell did. Every morning. I loved it. Now I miss it, but... Obviously I have new things I can keep myself occupied with. So, there is that. But anyway, that's going to do it this week, everybody, for my blog. I'm going to be recording, I'm pretty sure I'm probably almost done with Summer Night's Craft Story. At least the story, at least the main part. I'll just have the rest of the unlock all the weapons, gather all the materials, do all that fun shit. Yeah. I might actually, I might actually see if there's a code to cheese that. Um, you have not lived until you've tried to get material in that thing. Oh my god, you have not lived until you've tried getting material. It's a pain in the ass. Big time. Anyway, that's all I have to say uh, for this week's episode. Next week, I will. I'm trying to come up with um, actual good topics each week. I'm trying. Last week wasn't a good week for me, uh, I just felt horrible. I'll probably be working until close next Thursday, knowing my luck. Unless I get one of my other jobs. Unless one of those other two jobs pans out, which... I have my fingers crossed for the one. I really want to work at the library. I really, really, really want to work at the library. Yeah, I really want to work at the library. I mean it. Okay, I might be losing some hours. I might lose a bit of pay, but... Oh my god, it feels so peaceful there. I really want to work at the library. But, anyway, everybody... I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I love every single one of you. Bye. And until next time. See ya.